Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling things happening in the world today. Lebanon, uh, definitely in the news right now, and maybe kind of under the radar of what most people are looking at when it comes to Lebanon. But Lebanon is definitely on board to become the next Syria, another internal conflict. And what's it all about? Well, you can guess it. It's the oil field off the coast of Lebanon. And uh, right now with Prime Minister Harari being held up or detained or kidnapped by the Saudi regime, uh, it's becoming, well, you know, kind of like a whoever can get a hold of Lebanon and control it gets the oil field off the coast there. Don't forget Russia actually has a deal started with Lebanon to begin with under Prime Minister Harari, uh, but that may very well change, especially if the country can be destabilized to the point that it turns into either a, a so-called civil war or something along that lines there to where they can get control of the country. And of course, the Saudis would love nothing more than to see a war between Israel and Hezbollah right now in order to be able to cause a bigger conflict in the country. But Israel has been talking about holding off with a war with Hezbollah inside of uh, Lebanon there. In fact, Israel has said they're not going to just fall for anything that the Saudis want to do. So it kind of makes you wonder, is this part of the bigger plan? Is it part of the game plan to begin with in order to be able to justify having an internal conflict instead to destabilize the nation altogether? Let's kind of look at this. Also going to be dealing with yet another holistic doctrine doctor has been killed. 77 doctors in two years. It is a major tragedy what's happening to the holistic community there. And of course, what is it all about? Kind of like Lebanon, it's all about big money. It's all about making sure the status quo amongst the medical community and the doctors and their billion and trillion dollar businesses and making sure they pump in all of these uh, you know, whether it be chemotherapy or their CAT scans and, and MRIs and everything else that actually can cause cancer. Don't say that it does, but it can cause cancer. And they tell you that. If you take a CAT scan, there's a warning to you that this could increase your risk of cancer. Uh, in fact, when my wife had one recently, she asked the doctor. He openly admitted, yes, it has been known that CAT scans cause cancer. Well, the problem is the holistic approach is much cheaper, much simpler, and a lot of different things that are out there. I've had, we've had all kinds of people writing in to us besides uh, the treatment that my wife is taking right now, speaking about everything from high dose vitamin C to uh, uh, car B carbonate and even that of cannabis. Now, we're not talking about smoking cannabis. We're talking about the oil itself from that that has healed cancers and been very successful. But even the doctors there or those that are promoting these things have been murdered, 77 in total thus far. Let's get right into the news right now. This is what brought me to the issue about Israel, excuse me, Lebanon, uh, what's going on there. And of course, Israel's relationship there, could they end up in a conflict? But this came out on RT today. Israel shouldn't go into war with Lebanon as we will surely win, says the Lebanese foreign minister. Don't forget Harari, uh, the uh, the prime minister of Lebanon is right now detained in Saudi Arabia. You know, at one time I was beginning to think that, no, well, he can't really be detained. I thought to myself, it's got to be that, you know, because, I, I mean, my thought was, you know, the Saudis and the United States has a very close relationship. So certainly they haven't detained Harari. It must be that, you know, this is just totally a, a mix-up in what's going on. Well, then, as I begin to look at this a little bit deeper, I found out in what I'm seeing here today, this is another case of Syria. They're trying to destabilize Lebanon in order to gain control of the oil fields off the coast of Lebanon. Why? Because Russia did an oil deal with Lebanon. Can't have that happening, can we? So this comes out here today, and I see the article, and I'm thinking, okay, well, the foreign minister is warning Israel, don't go to war with us because we're going to win. Well, that's kind of unusual because Hezbollah and the actual Lebanese government normally are at odds with one another. Since when did they kind of join back up together? I, I didn't really know. I'm kind of wondering what's going on here. So I begin to look up a little bit about Mr. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Basel, who is the actual uh, foreign minister for Lebanon. And then the first thing I see was 15 hours ago on LiveView map, Lebanese foreign minister Gibran Basel visits Moscow, Lebanon's independence 
policies outrage some regional governments. Hmm. Did a little bit more digging, and I see that he met with the European Vice President Frederica Mogherini. Uh, met with the Lebanese Foreign Minister Gibran Basel today in Brussels. And of course, they're really letting him know, don't forget, the European Union has been behind you, Foreign Minister Basel. We can't have you uh, going off and doing anything else. We're right here for you, really doing like the cheerleader campground style thing. Uh, but then he does go and he meets with, uh, on his way over to meet with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. And of course, as I looked at this article here, the next one here on Sot, Signs of the Times, this was what really gave me a lot of the inside information that I needed to see to understand what's really going on in Lebanon. It says Lebanese Foreign Minister Gibran Basel, and I may be pronouncing the name wrong. I actually had a friend of mine with the same last name years ago, so I've always, he always called it Basel. I'm not sure if that's the right way, but anyway, Lebanon suffers intimidation attempts to cancel gas deal with Russia. Well, if he suffered intimidation attempts, I'm sure that probably come from either the European Union or maybe even the good old USA. Uh, you know, I love my country, but I tell you what, we do some very sinister things in order to make sure that we get control of certain parts of the world. That's sad. That's not the way America used to be. And I'm sure many of you out there, friends I know, that really would like to see America to be the honest, down-to-earth, good Christian nation that we once used to stand for. What has happened to it? You know, I used to hear always the talk about, you know, well, the name of God got left out of politics, and it still has. You know, I know that some that really want to believe since President Trump has come in that we brought, we brought God back in there. You know, the thing is, is the name of Jesus Christ, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach is not mentioned in any governmental meeting whatsoever. You know, that's why the, the, our nation is in such a dire straits today. It's because we are founded on the principles of Christianity. And I'm not against, especially not against the Jewish people. I mean, I was born a Jew to start with. So, you know, uh, I believe Yeshua as Messiah. But the, the point is, I'm not against my Jewish brothers and sisters at all. I realize our foundation is on the Tanakh, the Old Testament as well. And as far as the Muslim people, I'm not against the Muslim people either. Although I don't agree with them in what they believe, it doesn't mean that I hate them. By no means do I hate them. You know, they are still from our father Abraham, just a different side, a different ideology altogether. I do stand for the principles of what I do believe and used to be the United States was built upon that foundation, but that has long since gone out the door. And in fact, because of that, that's why there is a mass murder of Christians throughout the Middle East. Why? Because the Middle East is starting to realize they just don't care. The Americans don't care anymore. If we cared, then when we had the refugee crisis inside of Syria, besides the Sunnis, we would have taken in also the Christians that were being slaughtered. In fact, the Vatican really needs to make a strong stand on that themselves. All this talk about love and peace and instead bring all the Sunni Muslims into Europe and totally forget about your Christian brothers and sisters that are being slaughtered by these groups that the United States and many other countries, even Israel, has aided Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and all them slaughtering your Christian brothers and sisters. Why? Because they're not Roman Catholic, perhaps. They're Eastern Orthodox, which is part of the split of a thousand years ago, so therefore they get kind of thrown under the bus. And then what about the Shiite Muslims that were refugees as a result of this war? We didn't rescue any of them either. And here I am. It doesn't matter to me. Sunni or Shiite. I remember one time talking to a, a friend of mine in Israel. He was a Muslim guy. And I asked him, I said, why do you guys hate each other so bad? And it's all over a doctrinal dispute, he told me. But I'm like, aren't you brothers? Don't you care enough without wanting to kill each other over your differences in religions? But it's that much of a heated debate. Now, of course, I've gotten different opinions on that, so I won't go into all of that. But the clear point is that I've seen here, getting back on track here with the Lebanese foreign minister, what's happening there is that there is a gas deal. And let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger on the screen here so we can kind of look at some of this print for you guys as well. But he says here, Beirut has, Beirut has faced certain difficulties in the course of its own efforts to stabilize the region. The Lebanese foreign minister said on Friday, ahead of talks with the Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, uh, 
that he revealed that prior to the current crisis, Lebanon was almost at a threshold of the first ever contract to develop shall, uh, uh, chalet gas fields with Russian companies. However, a campaign hindered the deal under various pretexts is now underway, he claimed. Some countries are trying to use certain forces to remove the head of Lebanon, he said. The Saudis. Plain and simple. I mean, how evil can we possibly get in this region? This is nothing but about, you know, the demonization of Russia. You know, and really, I, it's, it's so sickening. You know, sit back, get the deep state out of involved in American politics, and maybe President Trump and President Putin could come to a, uh, some normalcy here. But it's obvious to me, when these two get a few minutes alone and meet, they're working out deals. It seems like they could actually make some headway. But as soon as President Trump leaves the president, uh, leaves the presence of President Putin, and they've spoken of as, as friends and able to make deals, and he goes back, the American deep state grabs a hold of Trump and lets him know that's not what you're supposed to say. Shut up and say what we're telling you to say or else we'll deal with you in another way. Perhaps that's what's going on in the background and that's why we can't get any normalization with Russia. Or is it because Russia has banned GMO inside of their country and they believe in organic crops, which by the way, might help the health of human beings in America rather than eating all the genetically modified foods that is absolutely killing the population. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Prince Henry said that there's too many people in the world. That might kind of hinder the depopulation agenda. Isn't that called Agenda 21? I don't know if it's the same thing or not. The point is, it's troubling to me. We could have a world that is actually headed in a peaceful direction, but instead, people like to say, they should change your name from Israeli News Live to Russian News Live. No, I'm for Humanity News Live. Maybe that would be a better name as well. Think about the fact that in Russia, there are many, many millions of Christians that live there that are supposed to be our brothers and sisters. I know they're not Roman Catholic. They're Russian Orthodox. Well, you know, doctrines of different denominations, it doesn't matter to me what your doctrine is. Believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. That's a great start right there, right? Well, but no, we have to demonize Russia. I'm sorry, because we want to take over all the gas and oil fields throughout the entire Middle East. It's a takeover. It's a power struggle. Same goes with Iran. I realize, yes, Iran talks about wiping Israel off the map. Why? Because they hate each other. You know, but the thing is, Iranians are human beings, and at one time, their country did rescue Jews during the Holocaust. At another time in history, they sent the Jewish people back home to rebuild the Second Temple. And we could also even go so far as to say, we didn't go into captivity because we were such great people at the time, but the House of Judah went into captivity because of our own sins. Now, since the Ayatollah took over, and we did see a change in the way the Iranian perception is to the Jewish people, and many Jews had to leave as a result of that. So there has been a change, and there is problems on both sides, whether it be the Israeli politicians, or the Iranian politicians, or the Ayatollah, whatever controls Iran, etc. But the point is, I think we could really do something could be worked out. If somebody would be silly, willing to sit down and just for a moment, forget about your billion dollar industry of pharmaceuticals in America, the medical, uh, maybe you should call it the medical industrial complex and the military industrial complex and all these wars that we have to create in order to make sure that somehow or another we can pay off this multi-trillion dollar debt. I guess I am on my soapbox tonight, friends. I mean, I should just be preaching the gospel instead is what I should do at this point. But nonetheless, as I'm seeing this, this is what, I, this is what really gets me. And of course, they're demonizing Russia constantly. You know why they're demonizing Russia and they're doing all the sanctions and stuff? It's because... Russia's interfering with the game plan. You remember how the Bible says, just for my Christian friends, let's do this. All right, uh, those of you that just come here to, to, to listen to the news, forgive me just for a moment because we have to just go look at something because in reality, we are totally forgetting about the word of God and how this plays out. Everybody wants to think that America is the greatest nation on earth. I would agree in, to some d degree with that as well. But the problem is, is what makes us a great nation? A great nation is a nation that really takes the time to try to share the gospel with the world. But unfortunately, our military that we are being, uh, that we are allowed to be used here is uh, spent more time in killing the rest of the world right now. Not to say that I don't love my 
fellow Americans that serve in the armed forces there to protect our rights and freedoms. And that's what we are supposed to be doing. But instead, we're trying to help overthrow the entire Middle East. And I realize the Rothschilds are behind all of that for the power grab and the money grab that they're doing. Uh, but it's trying to secure the future of America so that we never run out of gas and oil, but all the rest of the countries can. What do you think is happening in Sudan? Don't forget General Wesley Clark said all this was going to happen. Are we totally dumbfounded on all of this? I mean, think about it. After all, but don't forget, remember, why do they demonize Russia? Back up to Daniel 11:44. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affrighten him. Who? The king of the north. Melakot Sidfon, the king of the north, a hidden king. Could that be the pope of the pope of Rome? Well, it could be. Could it be the king of England could be. It's somebody though, and I guarantee you one thing, NATO forces are his military. And as it's written, I think in the Apocalypse of Thomas, I believe it is, I may be wrong on this, not a canonical book, mind you, so therefore take it as a grain of salt, but consider the, the validity of the prophecy itself. That in the last days, there would be a king that would rise up out of the south that would bankrupt the world's economy with his what? Roman soldiers. Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? And by the way, as I've stated so many times in the past, and I think it's worth stating again, if we look at verse 40, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south, okay, king of the south, the Melech Hanagiv, the king of the Negev desert, by the way, that's not just south like in South Pole. No, it's Negev, which is the Negev desert in Israel. So it's an Israeli leader, okay, all right. Now, first, what does he say? He's going to push right here. Push emo with him, not against him. I mean, you can't translate emo against him. I mean, I mean, even right there. At the time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him, at him. How do you say at him when you say emo? Is there any Israeli listening today that knows that the word emo means with him? I mean, can some Israeli take the time, comment in the comment section below and say emo? What is the definition of emo? Em is with. The vav here with the little dot over the top there means him. Push with him or with it. The king of the Nagiv. And who is he pushing with? The king of the north. Hatsifon. Okay, the point is, and they come over, they come over the what? This is what beautiful, beautiful as well. And the kingdom of shall come not against him, but Aliyav, over him, over, Aliyav, over, okay? Over him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries. Okay, here we go. Let's go. Barasot. Baratzot is plural. The land's plural. This is nothing, this is nothing to do with Israel. This is not the king of the north pushing at the king of the south and I'm going to take you over. No, this is the two of them working together, coming into the countries, the Middle East, to overtake it. So that means we got some kind of crooked politician working in the government in Israel as well as some hidden king working with a NATO force to overthrow all these countries, these lands, all right, the lands there. That's exactly what it is, the lands. And they shall overthrow as he passes through them. Hmm. I think that's about what's happening. We've seen it with Iraq. We've seen it with Syria. We've seen it now uh, fixing to happen with Lebanon. And we're also going to see it with Iran in the very near future. And the Saudis are right there with them, boy. Right there with them. There's that old dog on a leash kind of makes you wonder. All right, let's move on then. We'll get out of the issue with Lebanon there. Conservative Poland hits back after scandalous attacks on its independence in the EU parliament. Ah, that's kind of interesting. Let me tell you what one of the reasons why uh, they're trying to put sanctions uh, on uh, Poland. One of the biggest issues well, it's because of the migrant refugees. Poland doesn't want to take in all these illegal refugees that Merkel was so kind to bring into the European Union. And of course, Sweden, you know, the liberal country that they have become, open up their doors. Yes, please come in, come in. We want you. We love you. We love everybody and everything. And you know what? Let's, let me tell you something. The refugees, they didn't ask to be refugees. And I understand that. And my heart goes out for the refugees in that regard there. But when you're just pumping in men into 
Europe. And when I had inside information that they were getting letters, uh, a friend of mine in Europe, all right, and I'm not going to call his name, but he actually spoke with refugees personally. And they said, no, the reason why we are here is because we heard there is money and free money in Europe for us to have and to come and housing and women. And then, of course, we abandon all the laws in Europe, Germany, Sweden, Sweden, especially Sweden. Sweden doesn't care about the laws. You don't think you think Sweden cares about the laws? Let me show you what they did right here. This right here is on uh, OICE of Europe. Excuse me, that vo voice of Europe. Uh, Swedish woman raped by refugee commits suicide after her prosecutors claim lack of evidence. This woman right here just the other day committed suicide. Lack of evidence. Do you realize how many women are being raped in this country now because of this refugee crisis? You know, the thing is, it's not to say that you're not trying to help refugees in a serious situation, but if the countries would enforce their laws. If you would remember your own citizens and that realize that the refugee here is at your own invitation and that you're there trying to help them, but you have a governance, a system, a, a rule of law, and you were to keep those laws and enforce those laws, we wouldn't be having this types of situations here. And in fact, if anything, if you need to strengthen the law because of what's going on, just before I came on with this, I seen another one, 13 year old girl by three refugee men was passed from one to the other and raped repeatedly. It is a heinous crime against humanity. What is happening? And then here we have this here, uh, voice of Europe again, this one here, uh, what's going on. Let me see if we can get it to break up bigger here. This is, um, I can't actually get the page to blow up because of the slowness right now. This is in Brussels. And of course, more rioting. It's just what it's become. I mean, Europe is really, it is in a total mess with everything that is happening there. Total mess there. Uh, this is another very, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast here, very troubling situation uh, that's going on here. 77 holistic practitioners, doctors included, naturopath doctors, regular doctors that also practice uh, as holistic doctors, now dead since 2015. This is beyond strange. They are dropping like flies and MSM ignores them, mainstream media. Natural News is publishing this, and in fact, uh, it, it, it is really becoming an epidemic. It, it is unreal. Uh, one of the uh, physicians that has worked with my wife in her condition right now, uh, very cautious about how public he becomes on his treatment because of the fact he knew the one of the eight doctors that was murdered that was working on the cure for cancer. And they were really expounding on a Japanese man's work uh, that had not only discovered the cure for cancer, but also the cure for autism. And it has a lot to do with the vaccines. There, there is uh, people that speak out, and including my wife, who is very uh, vocal and public, has spoke uh, many times on, on YouTube, has spoken conferences now, uh, interviews doctors, both in Europe and in the United States, and is really bringing out the just how serious of an epidemic we have, whether it be with vaccines, GMO, uh, cures for cancer, uh, et cetera, the different things that help people, uh, always speaking about this, in so much that when she went to her own doctor here, the clinic that she goes to here in Orlando, run into a man uh, that was actually getting chelation treatment uh, after hearing my wife's. And God bless that brother that is listening. I'm sure tonight he'll hear this broadcast as well. Uh, many people have written her uh, since she also fell very, very ill, uh, just saying, you know, you have helped us so much. And uh, we're just always appreciative of this, but this is what this is what these doctors are facing: is the murder that you know they're risking their lives for trying to help people, and it's all because big pharma wants to keep those big dollars coming in. The insurance company need their big dollars rolling in, and of course, the big huge medical centers like we were passing here in Orlando, a cancer institute in this huge huge medical facility. You know, it's like a gigantic hospital, all dedicated for making billions of dollars. 
for cancer people that are, that are dying with cancer. And instead of helping these people, they're pumping in this chemotherapy. They might survive. If they survive the chemotherapy, it might get rid of the cancer for a little while. But as we ran into a man the other day in the same clinic, Yana goes to there, the, the, the man had, he was a three or two time cancer survivor and he'd gone through chemotherapy, but he keeps coming back, keeps coming back. Finally, he said through some research that he was doing uh, or somebody in his family was doing, he found out about high dose vitamin C and what it can do. And here he is in a little clinic, don't need some gigantic hospital to do it in, you know, with, with a whole bunch of other people that were being treated for cancer and stuff. Now, Yana's not been diagnosed with cancer, but you know, as you guys know, we've already shared with you, she does have a tumor. And of course, you know, they are trying to aggressively treat it because she would actually go back in uh, here in the next month or so here to be rechecked to see if it's growing. And of course, the only way to determine if it's cancer or not would require surgery. And But the doctors are trying to aggressively treat it and seemingly, and just let's be in prayer for, but it seems like maybe it may have stopped the growth of the tumor. And so we're very optimistic about this right now, but cautiously, she still has a, lot, a long way to go uh, to get out of the woods with this thing. But we, we do want to take, real quick, I want to thank you though for your love, your support, your prayers, those that are praying for her. I can't begin to thank you and I know she is so thankful. She sees the love and support of the people and the kindness and, and, the, and the letters, the responses and stuff. Uh, so we just ask your continued prayer for her. Uh, because it is still a ways to go. But going back into this situation here, officials claim the husband killed his wife, two small children, and then turned the gun on himself. But friends and loved ones have contacted Aaron Elizabeth over the health of Nut News, who has been documenting the deaths of so many of the world holistic medicine since 2015 to express doubts of the official claim of the murder-suicide within hours of the discovery of the bodies. Uh, it, it is believed that it was a murder and not the case of what they're trying to say. And it is too many suspicious cases. In fact, we know another case here, can't call names or anything like that, but another doctor that we're aware of that also died. Uh, we actually have a personal contact, uh, the family of this doctor here as well, and the family 100% believes that he was targeted and murdered. Uh, too many strange deaths that are happening, but anyway, uh, very, very sad situation here uh, of what's going on there. They're blaming all this. They're, they're, like I said, some are claiming it's murder. Some are claiming it's uh, that these are suicides. You know, just. But if we had that many allopathic doctors that were to die in a two-year period, 77 allopathic doctors. I'm sure there's uh, maybe that many that die that in that time period anyway from old age, but I'm talking about at the prime of their life and in their practices, it would be, it would be a national outcry. But you notice though, mainstream media doesn't care. Why? Because they're all owned by big pharma. That's the tragedy with all of this, friends. Very much a tra tragedy. This here is another doctor right here uh, that is using uh, bicarbonate uh, baking soda basically intravenously to target cancer. Uh, you can find this if you happen to be curious about these things here. Nature Works Best Cancer Clinic, uh, baking soda cancer treatment, sodium bicarbonate by Colleen Huber, uh, NMD. Anyway, this is not my specialty. As Yanni gets better, I'm sure she'll start to get back and speaking again on her channel, Rise Up Children of God. Just look at our featured channels there. A good friend of mine let me know today that, you know, brother, hey, by the way, go in there, click on there, put your channels in feature because a lot of people don't even realize that you have another channel unless you mention it here. So I want to thank that brother there for just saying that. I won't call his name, but is really a blessing because I'm not tech savvy and I wasn't even thinking about, didn't even think about that. Uh, but anyway, so we did put it in the uh, feature channel section of our YouTube channel here, Yana's channel, uh, Danoon Institute as well as on there. So you make it easier for you to be able to find those channels. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Go to IsraeliNewsLive.org, our website there. Uh, visit our website. You can make comments. I'm not always good about uh, going in there and checking the comments and getting them uh, approved, but I do do it every so often. We'd love to be able to hear from you. I'm Stephen Bennett with Israeli News Live, Arab Talk.